in general the art of the northern european baroque is much more secular still than the art of italy northern europe is predominantly protestant while italy is still predominantly catholic this means that northern european artists turn their attention to secular patrons just as we discussed in the 16th century to support their lives and their careers this means that one of the forms of art that becomes very popular in northern europe in the 17th century is the portrait and these portraits can be the type of portrait that most people think of when we say the word portrait a single individual either just the head and shoulders or even full length but at this time we often see a growing popularity of group portraiture group portraits were economical both for the people being painted and the artist typically these were paid for by each sitter contributing a small sum um, often based on your prominence or importance within the group and so each person that was painted paid a smaller sum than they would for a solo portrait but the artist often made more money when grouping all of these small sums together and these group portraits were often associated with civic organizations so that's what we see here the archers of saint hadrian are a group of militiamen they're archers that would be called together to defend the city in times of war but in times of peace were a fraternal brotherhood they're men that knew and probably liked each other at least to some extent and they would get together and celebrate important occasions often with feasting and drinking and that's exactly what we see here these archers are celebrating the feast of saint hadrian we see them grouped together they seem to be having a good time and unlike the group portraits we see before the 17th century these men are relaxed they're casual we see one man on the far right even reading a book and they certainly are presented with honor and dignity but they're not presented as stiff or overly formal We do also see individual portraits, and at this time, a few more women start to become artists. It's very difficult for women to become artists in the 15th, 16th, and 17th century because of the kinds of training required. You were trained in a studio, often away from your home, unless you were fortunate enough to have a father who was a painter. And you often viewed nude bodies, both male and female, which was seen as inappropriate for female students. You might even see the dissection of a cadaver if you were very lucky. And again, this was seen as inappropriate for female artists. But a, a few artists, including Judith Leister, who we see here, managed to transcend that. Even once you manage to become an artist as a woman, though, you have to continue to defend your reputation. So when we look at this self-portrait, we see Leister sitting in front of a painting that represents the type of painting that she usually did, this kind of lighthearted genre scene, often people having a good time. But if we look at her clothing, her clothing is that of a middle class or upper middle class gentlewoman. Very likely, this is not the type of clothing she actually painted in. If nothing else, this stiffened collar and ruff would make it very difficult to paint but instead of showing herself in the kind of more casual clothes that she probably actually used for painting she shows herself as a lady someone who even though she has a professional career is deserving of the respect and politeness that you would give a lady we also see artists start to become more experimental with portraits so probably the most famous Northern European artist of the 17th century is Rembrandt van Rijn, who we often know just by his first name of Rembrandt. And one of his most fam famous paintings is this one. The proper title of this is the company of Captain Franz Benning Koch, um, but this is known as the Night Watch because it hung in the city hall in Amsterdam for many years, and it would receive this accumulation of dirt and soot on the surface that made it look very dark. So up until this was cleaned in the late 20th century we thought this was a nighttime scene after that modern cleaning we realized this is in fact a daytime scene although it's quite dark rembrandt is famous for his dramatic contrasts of light and dark and this is actually a very similar portrait to the archer of saint hadrian that we saw earlier 
in the front center, we see Captain Cock, the head of this militia company. And behind him, we see the members of his militia preparing to move out on maneuvers. This painting was cut down to fit the space it was displayed in, so it was originally several inches wider on either side. And we could see, particularly on the left-hand side, the bridge at the militia company is about to march out over. Probably the most unusual figure in this painting is the little girl who is in a beam of light, and her presence is usually explained by art historians due to the chicken at her belt. So Captain Koch, his name literally translates as cock, as in rooster, and we see her with that chicken there. It's unclear to art historians if she is a personification or if she's really there, and she's just meant to be a kind of subtle nod to Rembrandt's major patron that we see depicted here, but this is a much more active and dynamic group portrait than Halls as the Archers of St. Hadrian. We see about the same number of people, but they are moving around. They're busy getting ready to move out on 